Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we thought we'd share a little bit about how we use our RV and how we take trips, especially given that we live in this rig full time. Normally we're in the city, of course, just like anybody, we do want to get away. Everybody does, you know, camp or vacation a little differently. And for us, it's one of those things where we love to get away from people, get away from all of that energy, that noise, and we like to just be out in nature. However, we don't really consider it camping because we do bring a mansion on wheels with us. Now, I think something that sets us apart from a lot of folks is the fact that we boondock 100% of the time. And in fact, over the last six years, I have never once spent money on a campground. Emma and I have been together for just over three years and it has never once been a problem. Between solar and battery power, we've always been in pretty good shape. Now, with this rig, right now we are still working on our battery system. Even so we have a ton of solar, but we have nowhere to store it. So we're kind of in a hold pattern on that one, but we do have the generator built in. So this is actually the first time that we've actually, I've ever actually used a generator and it's been surprisingly good. Our ultimate goal is just to get away from people and to get out in nature. I think one of the things that helps a lot with that is just staying flexible. And that really does help. Normally, Monday through Friday, we will stay in the middle of Seattle. And then on the weekends, often we'll get out of Seattle and we'll go to either a neighboring city or we'll go to a port somewhere and hang out, walk the dogs. We'll do all of our errands and such. But like this week, for example, Emma's actually on midwinter break. That is actually kind of nice. So we have nine days where we can go and do whatever we want to. I did have a dentist appointment on Monday after work, but that left Tuesday through Sunday that we can go out. So we decided to head down to Portland and then out to the coast of Washington and spend some time out here in the, in the rainforest. Uh, it is just, it's beautiful and it's just a nice trip. In general, as long as we have at least four or so days, it's really worth it for us to head out because obviously, especially in something like this, it takes up a lot more fuel. And if possible, we'll combine some of our travels along with us. So we'll ensure that on our way back, we do fill our tanks, we get fuel, propane, food, whatever we need to so that we can use less fuel during the week. So hopefully there's a little bit of a balance there. But when we're picking a place, we really, we choose a spot on a map and whatever sounds good to us. Uh, we do avoid any touristy trap type places. Again, we're just trying to get away from people, but uh, we love to be out in nature. And so a lot of times the, the Washington coasts are an easy choice for us. And if possible, we wanna make sure that we have network connection. Unless it's the weekend and we specifically want to completely disconnect, I'm still working today. So I wanna make sure that I do have a little bit of cell coverage so I can do remote sessions and such and meetings. If you can do that in the middle of the woods, why not? So that's that's obviously something that's kind of important. Um, weather isn't too much of a consideration because here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't have to deal with tornadoes or hurricanes or anything like that like we did when we lived in Tennessee. And then I know a lot of folks won't use their rigs while the, the temperatures are lower, but for us, as long as, like in this rig, for example, we have a tank here. So we want to make sure that our batteries stay up, the tank heaters stay on at least most of the time, and then we can always kick on the furnace as needed. So we'll turn that on every hour or so um, just to keep it about 20 degrees above freezing at least. But I think, I think the interesting thing is that a lot of folks will plan years in advance some of their trips, but we actually just, we kind of plan either the day of or at most we'll plan about a week in advance and we'll say, hey, next week it would be nice to head out to the coast or it would be nice to head out to Oregon or the mountains or Bellingham, whatever we want to do. And it's never been a problem, not once. It also, if we have a general destination, we can stop we can see more things and we're not in any rush that helps us enjoy our time out a whole lot more and while it's nice if we can get a spot at a campground i know especially on the fourth of july when we try to come out there every single campground that we come across is completely full and but for us that's okay because it doesn't matter whether we're in a campground or just pulled off on the side of the road somewhere as long as it's a safe place we're totally fine. We don't use hookups, so there's no difference between an actual campground and just a secluded spot for us. Uh, it's all the same. So that actually turns out pretty well 
in general for us. And then we do have a few favorite spots around Washington. We'll head out towards that spot. If we come across something better, we'll stay there for a night. Uh, or like we're doing this weekend, we have at least two or three places that would be really nice to go. So we'll make our way there and then we'll go ahead and we'll make a round trip out of it where we'll hit a bunch of other things that we could stop at along the way on our return. We do try never to travel the same path twice on the same trip. Just because if you're going out somewhere, why not take a different route and see something different on the way back? Being that we live full time in this RV, we could be in a completely remote location with no coverage at all, and we still have every comfort of home. Uh, or we can be in the middle of the city and we can stop, make lunch, and uh, just enjoy ourselves. A lot of folks do plan, and if that's, if that's your style, that's absolutely okay. Uh, it's not for us. We really enjoy this lifestyle and everything that it does afford us. because when we do have a beautiful spot like this, we get to set everything up, including our levelers, our slides, and our awning. Now today, it's a little too cold to set up our awning. Um, it'd be nice to get the sun to hit the side, which is something that we've actually noticed is that this rig is pretty warm. It really collects that, that sunlight, really warms the rig pretty quickly. Hopefully what that means is that in the summer, it will get hot, but we will get enough sun that we can power our air conditioners. It tends to be pretty cold where we park in general, other than the summer months. It's kind of a nice feature to have. When we're in the city, of course, we don't put our slides out. We don't put the awning out and we may actually start using the levelers depending on where we're at, as long as we're out of the way enough, just because you actually can't really see them unless you're specifically looking because they did a really good job hiding the levelers underneath here. And if you're looking, you can probably see the leveler under there, but it's not the first thing that you see. For the most part, our solar does do a pretty good job collecting enough power to keep us going. So again, for today and probably for the next week or two until we get our new batteries, we'll be running that generator, but it would be nice, you know, especially in the middle of a city, not to have to use a noisy, smelly generator to keep us warm and keep our things charged. So.
one thing that we did get was our CB radio installed. We're not picking anything up out here in the middle of uh, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, but we are going to use it for a little bit before we decide kind of where we want to mount some things and we do have some cleaning up to do. But the nice thing about this is there were no holes that needed to be drilled, only some wires that needed to be run. We've got the radio antenna here at least temporarily, uh, if not permanently. The wires ran down and in and then we've got the gps module installed as well as uh, we're working on where to put this guy this is the radio antenna for the shortwave scanner which should be pretty nice we're heading out uh, to head north towards forks and then eventually we'll go over to port angeles uh, we might stay the night again and then start heading back Today's Friday, I'm still working, so you know this will be kind of a slow trip, but that's totally fine with us. Our batteries should be there tomorrow. We'll pick those up on our way back to Seattle and hopefully get them installed either Sunday or Monday, Tuesday, whatever it takes. Our solar has been doing surprisingly well in the city because even with the cloud cover that we get there, we still get nine to 10 amps consistently. So 10 amp hours recharging the batteries is more than what we use with just lights, laptop charging, all that good stuff. And because we only run the furnace intermittently, we're not running it, you know, all day, all night. It does draw some power and it draws a, a good amount of power, but it's not a consistent draw. So between all that we use, it should balance out. And it looks like it balances out pretty well. Now, I haven't figured out about the fridge, about how many amps that uses. From what I'm saying, it draws about seven to 10 amps somewhere in there, but the compressor kicks on and then drops off. So it may actually only take up total between four and a half and seven amps fingers crossed every hour, which with the, the weather conditions here in the Pacific Northwest, we may very well be able to maintain instead of running that on propane, which will be a pretty big saver. We're gonna go ahead and get everything buttoned up and head north.
that is a solar hot water heater. We've been looking at doing something like that on our rig. If there's enough room, that would be a cool thing to have. So we're just out here exploring at Port Townsend and what a cool, what a cool little city on the peninsula of Washington. It's on the east side of the peninsula. So you have views of Mount Pilchuck, Mount Baker, um, and I'm sure on a really good day, even rainier. We've already seen some bald eagles in town, which is pretty awesome to see just out in the wild flying around town. If you are in Washington and looking for a little getaway, this is a cool spot to go. They also have probably the coolest RV park out here, right on the water. And uh, we're heading there next and I can already see some, some tiny houses and that's always fun. There are always awesome RVs in this uh, RV park as well, which are fun to look at. There's almost always at least one Airstream, if not two or three. So. I've already spotted one. This is where we'll be tonight. This is actually how it is about 99% of the time, uh, if not more, is that we find a nice spot on the side of the road and usually with a pretty great view, free to park. I mean, we have no need for hookups, so uh, that helps a whole lot. But as long as the road's quiet, there's not too much traffic, uh, there's no parking restrictions, it's not too shady, there's not a lot of graffiti or nonsense around, this works. Now, the difference is we could potentially put our levelers up, but this spot is pretty darn level as is. And we don't want to put our slides up because that would be outrageous. And while it may or may not actually come out into the road, you don't really want to risk that. It's also pretty obvious that you're sleeping in there and it's not just somebody, you know, parking and visiting a friend or family or something like that. Now, the cool part is that we, at this point, we just pull up and we don't have to do anything extra. We don't really ever deploy our awning anyways, uh, but we don't need to do that here. If the spot were on level, we could drop those, those jacks, but especially at a spot like this, and a lot of the places that we go, we just pull up and we're home. One thing that is a little bit different here versus like out at a campsite or out in the woods is that we do cover the windows right away when we get places like this. Uh, yeah. We shut the shades, we cover the front cab area, just so that uh, no one can see in the windows and see what we're doing in there. Not that it matters, but just we're not being like window peeped at yeah. and, and it just makes it a little more comfortable for us. And also our windows just sit up higher in this RV than they would like in our scam. For example, we were at ground level. So people walking by can just like peek right in, but we are not in any means also trying to be that stealthy either. Like we're not stealthy campers and not like people know that we're there and we're in there. And so it's not a big deal. 
I don't know how much money we have saved over the last six years not going to RV parks and campgrounds just for a place to park overnight, which is outrageous. I mean, I know that they can range anywhere from 25 to 65, 75 or more in a resort and, and such. And yet we have, I mean, once you close your blinds, it really doesn't matter. So one other thing is that we do have covers that we can magnetize to the front, um, but they're actually kind of a pain. And now that we have a camera up there, we don't really want to mess with that too, too much. Uh, but this is really um, a lot nicer than we thought it would be. Um, it's a very simple cover. It's just Velcroed up there. The nice part is that because there's just a sliver of, of area where light can get through, from the outside, it almost just looks like a reflection from oncoming traffic. So just for reference, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but the sun has gone down enough and we turn on every one of the inside lights and you can't see until you get right up close. You can see a little bit of light through just this cover here, but no light really in there other than what looks like it just might be a reflection uh, until you get right up close. But if you come up back here, it's kind of hard to tell. And the side windows, no light leaking through, which is nice. Obviously that's just the bathroom, so no light there. And then on the rear, nothing there. I mean, people are gonna know that there could be somebody in there. It is, it's a mansion on wheels. But I, if you're worried about people knowing that you're in there or being able to see in, there are other ways around it if you're concerned about it. But at least in this rig, even with the roller shades, you just can't see anything, which is nice. And we tend to park where there are also lights, which really helps with, is that a reflection or is that light coming from inside? It helps a lot with that. So uh, we aren't worried about it uh, and it's never been an issue. Last night, we did get back into Federal Way from Port Townsend. It was a good drive. We spent the vast majority of the morning working on turning the overhead cabinet into a shelf so that we could put our soundbar there. Believe it or not, that was kind of more work than uh, we thought. And we're working with really trying to reuse the materials that are there. And reinforcing that area is not quite as easy as it would sound initially. But we just stopped into one of the Federal Way libraries so that we can let the dogs run and check this out. We saw this guy before. Um, I actually have an older photo on our Instagram at Cozy Living Machine of this guy. We saw him at Walmart, but we just found this little, this little cabin on wheels. Check this out. I just think that's so cool, particularly given that it looks like it's built on a really lightweight trailer, maybe something that you could get at Harbor Freight or you know, something like that. Aesthetically, it's really, really, really cute. It's got a little wood stove, obviously, and you've got corrugated metal roofing, so it doesn't look like it'd be terribly expensive to put together, but quite a view as well at your front door. These guys are pretty excited to, to go play. So this is what we're working with so far. We've got this huge bar up here and we did go ahead and trim some of this out. Um, the interesting thing is the way that everything uh, was put together um, is it was actually using uh, the Luon as some of the support. So that is kind of interesting as we started kind of taking it apart. It was not really a framed support system like I had I would have assumed. So we went ahead and we're trying to repurpose some like brackets, extra brackets that we had back there um, to keep this pretty sturdy. And so far it seems pretty, pretty decent. Otherwise it sounds great. And when we're watching, not only can we remove this centerpiece again, but we can actually see all corners of the, 
the TV. We've been on a Harry Potter kick lately, <laughs> so we're up to number, number four now. So that has been kind of uh, kind of great to hear. Between the sound bar finally facing us uh, and the subwoofer down there, it sounds pretty pretty good for what it is, especially with the the theater seat. Uh, we do have some running around to do today. We're gonna let the dogs run. You can see they are pretty excited about that. Ignore the mess. And hopefully our batteries will be in today. And then we have some stuff to pick up from Amazon, including a few biking accessories, headlights, taillights, a new kickstand for her bike. Last night also, we found a hospital we could just park near. So if you think that there is not free places to park, they exist. I hope to kind of share a little bit more of that, just being that there are places you can go. I think a lot of people just don't know where to look. Kind of like the 20 reasons why they hate us video. There are a lot of things you should not do and don't overstay your welcome, but there are places that are out of the way, that are quiet, that you're not gonna be disturbed. And it's extremely unlikely that anything's going to happen anyways. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.